Did you know that Halo 2 was delayed for its PC release because one of the developers had hid a picture of his backside in the game? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode number 81. My name's Gareth Briley. I'm going to be your host. And on my virtual left is Mr. James Burke. How are you doing, James? It's good to be back. Oh, you were not here yeah. last week, were you? No. No. I wasn't. You can't get rid of me for long now. <laughs> I always return. You feeling better? Well, yeah. Sort of. Good. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why in a minute. Oh, great. Um, we, we might have some internet problems today, everyone. I'm just letting you know. This, it seems to be really lagging. We're on a Saturday today. And it seems to be the busiest day for all of us as we're all in separate places. But that, we, we'll get through it. On my virtual right is Mr. Richard Dobson. How are you doing, Richard? Hi. Uh, good, thank you. How are you two doing? Very good, thanks. Um, yeah. I, like, I, I like that sigh before you started, Richard. I was like, ah. <laughs> and I always, always doubt myself as to how to sort of respond to you because i don't want to sound like i've you know i could do every time yeah, i'm trying to mix it up a bit <laughs> <laughs> what just saying hello yeah yeah okay fair enough that's all right that's a good first impression yeah, that's true i think that's gone oh that's well yeah <laughs> we've lost that long gone. we've long gone <laughs> um what have you been up to this week you two uh james what have you been doing well, i've been recovering from the uh second Covid vaccine, and mm-hmm. um, I got the well last week, and it absolutely took it out of me. Oh wow! Um, the first one was fine, but the second, aching, flu-like symptoms. I was absolutely knackered. It's it's probably a good thing though. It means it's doing something. So hopefully it's uh, getting my body ready to fight off any potential variants that we've been doing. It sounds like a game it sounds like a game you're talking about now. Yeah, I've leveled up. You've leveled up. Good. <laughs> Great. Uh, very fight. Richard, have um, you had yours yet? No, but I saw this morning that they're introducing oh, they're inviting thirty two and thirty three year olds, so I'm I'm next. Oh good. And, yeah. Looking forward to being being jabbed. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Sorry, James, I interrupted. What else have you been doing? Now I'm just going to say how I've um, taken one of your suggestions, Gareth, and I now follow a football team in the Korean League. A while ago, you said that I should have a look at the, um, <laughs> the Korean Football League, and I finally have done. I've had no, uh, I have no, I have no memory of this. <laughs> it, it it was either on the podcast or in one of our off air gatherings. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'm now a fan of FC Seoul. Oh. Who are at second bottom in the league. Oh, Jesus. Um, but I, I didn't pick them because they've got Key Sung Young. He used to play for Swansea. Yeah. Um... So I recognised him and I thought, yeah, I'm going with that. But they're, they're utterly terrible. Um, but with the way the league works, it's only twelve teams, um, and they play quite a lot of games. So if they, if they win the next three games in hand, they could be in the top six. So here's wow. Open. wow! Good. Yeah. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's your idea. Did you have you watched a live game yet? Uh, like a ninety-minute whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I've watched two so far. Oh my god. Two live games. Uh, they run at like nine in the morning. You've got too much time in your hand. That's all I'm saying. Play some games. <laughs> wow. All right, thanks for that. <laughs> That's my next bit of advice. <laughs> okay. uh, Richard, what have you been doing? 
Um, well, with the the cinemas opening this week, I uh, I finally managed to catch the new Mortal Kombat film, <laughs> and uh, it was okay. I think <laughs> there was there's a bit in in the middle. It's about thirty to forty minutes of just all story and not much fighting, and it really does sag at that point. You feel like that bit, if it was in a, a Rocky film, for example, would just be a, a four-minute montage right. of them all training. Uh, but the, the, some of the fight scenes are, are really good. The uh, fatalities are, are impressive. Um, and I'm hoping that it does get a sequel because it'd be interesting to see what they do with the next. Um, James, have you seen it yet? Because you're really keen to see this, only for ages. I was. I wanted to see it on day one. But by the time it came to uh, student platforms, I thought, the hype's died down now. Uh, I'm not paying 15 quid. Right. So I'm going to wait now. It wait won't. It's free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. We're really looking forward to this film. Is it, <laughs> is, it, is it better than the original? Right I haven't seen the originals. Have you not? Oh, no. you need to find that. I think it's Amazon Prime. If you've got that, check it out. It's uh, very um, interesting. <laughs> um, so it's okay, Richard, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth a watch, but okay. you won't be rushing out to watch it again. Right. Good. I won't, I won't ever rush out and watch it. I don't think it's for me. <laughs> um, I've been watching a couple of things um, which I recommend uh, now there's a series on Netflix you might have seen before called Love, Death and Other Robots and it's like some short films that are animations and Netflix released the first season maybe a couple of years ago maybe a year ago mm-hmm. and there were 17 of them um, in one season and they were sort of like, they have a quite a sci-fi feel, most of them, or kind of like creature of the week kind of feel. And they're all tackling different subjects, but loosely based on love, death, and other robots. Um, and season two was just dropped last week. And there's only eight episodes. Each are about, the longest is about 12 minutes. And so a much more condensed series. And I've watched them all. Um, I watched them all <laughs> over one night when I got back late from work. You've got too much time on your hands, you. <laughs> <laughs> True. Very good. True. Um, and seventy percent of them are great. So I'd really recommend it if you kind of love animation. And some of the animations, well, mostly animation, is fantastic. But some of the stories are really great. There's some. There's a story about a sort of old lady whose Hoover um, um, robot Hoover runs a muck and tries to kill her. There's a Christmas story that unlike anything you've ever seen in your life before. And there's a brilliant story based on a, a J.G. Ballard who did uh, Crash and um, High Rise, a short story about a giant that washes up on an English beach and what happens, like dead, and what happens, what happens, um, what do the people do with it? They start tearing the body apart and... Sounds like Gulliver's Travels. Yeah, but a very darker version of that. But it's really worth a watch. It's really good. And only 10, 12 minutes. So give it a go. Have you seen any of it, you two? Uh, I watched yeah. most of the first series and, and enjoyed it. It reminded me of the likes of Animatrix and mm. Halo Legends from back in the day. These sort of an, mm. anime anthology type yeah. things. But yeah, I was impressed by it. James? Yeah, I watched about, I watched about five minutes of one of them. <laughs> I couldn't really get into it. Korean football was on. You had to switch over. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's worth watching. It's really good. And the other thing I'm going to recommend really quickly is a TV series that's on Sky Atlantic at the moment, or Now TV, which I'm watching. Uh, Mayor of East Town, Mayor as in M A R E, and it's got Kate Winslet in it, and it's like a quite a realistic crime drama. Um, Kate Winslet plays a sort of police detective in a very small town these towns in sort of pennsylvania in america it's a bit like crew and it um and there's a murder of a girl in the first episode and there's a couple of girls who also go missing so it's about that but it also it's really beautifully acted it's really entertaining and it, and some kind of harrowing crime scenes but really well done 
And it's got also the actor who plays Quicksilver in the X-Men films and... Evan Peters. Yeah, who's always great. He's, he's in the American good. Horror Story. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. He's always great. So he's in it as well. But yeah. I'd recommend that if you two want to watch that or anyone else. Yeah, I've seen the finale. You've seen the finale? the last episode. Oh, you saw the yeah. last episode? Did you, did you watch the ones before that? No. Mm, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have just, to just do my panic. Right. And just watched a bit of it. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> good. <Right>. Good. <laughs> Ever, <laughs> never watched the world up. Yeah. Save a bit of time. Yeah, good. <laughs> Richard? Um, I don't have Sky Atlantic, unfortunately. Right, you two, get off I'm the a... podcast, Dan. This is <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you've got now TV or Sky Atlantic, give it a watch. Sorry, James, what are you going to say? I'm going to say, don't have got me, I've watched it. <laughs> <laughs> you've, glanced at, you've glanced at it. That's not watching it. You've glanced at it between Korean football and wrestling. <laughs> that's like getting a book and reading the last page yeah exactly whether it's for me or not it's quicker though isn't it <laughs> <laughs> let's do games let's go straight into games you two Richard what, you, what have you been playing you've been playing a video haven't you yeah um, so I well basically I, I, I've been playing one game mainly this week um, but I'll go on to a second game that I dabbled with but mainly this week it's um been Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and yeah, it's 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 really really as someone that sort of played the original, as many people did, I think when I was probably before I was eighteen, it, it feel it feels like a lifetime ago now, but um, yeah, immediately once the uh, original Mass Effect title screen pops up, you. It instantly transports you back to this this time and spending time with these these characters that you spent a long long time with and it feels instantly familiar i think they've done a really really good job with this remaster that they've properly kept um everything as you remember um whilst updating it for more modern consoles and uh bringing in line a lot of older mechanics up 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 to date uh so th- for example the big thing with the um the maker that you drive around in this is the first one isn't it first yeah effect, yeah um it feels similar to how it felt before uh very janky but also works a bit better they've they've tightened that up um you can still fling it off of um cliffs and and it not receive any damage which is still fun to do but yeah it feels a lot better to drive and then just just getting getting reacquainted with these characters and uh picking your favorites again i've got so loads of questions richard can i ask you questions yes yes um question one um how many have you played of the three so far um i'm over halfway through the first one and for the purpose, because I'm reviewing it, so obviously yeah. I need to play all through. I've done a little bit of the second one as well. I've not touched the third one yet. Okay, good. Um, but I need to obviously do that soon. Question two Who are you romancing this time around? Ah, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going for, even though when I first played it, I didn't know what happened, obviously, in the second one, but I'm going for Liara. Again, uh-huh. um, I had an issue the other day where I'd just finished uh, Novaria, the, the planet Novaria, um, where Ashley and Liara came to me and they were like, we need you to sort this out now. Which one of us are you picking? Because I apparently I'd been playing them off against each other without my knowledge. Right. Um, so I, I said, yeah, sorry, it's going to be Liara. <laughs> to, to let Ashley down gently. Oh. Can you romance the Krogan? I've never tried. <laughs> <laughs> this is a time, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe on my insanity playthrough. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see that love scene. Oh, blimey. Um, 
Good. Um, James, have you got any questions before I carry on? Because you've not played it yeah. before, have you? What, what's the name of the main character? John. John Shepard. I haven't, I haven't changed the correct. name. I've just gone for the... <laughs> Yeah, okay, no, it's correct. Yeah. <laughs> James has not ever sure. played a Mass Effect. Question's done. <laughs> um, question, you know, that, you know, famously you used to go, when you were on the ship, you used to go into the lift and there used to be, I mean, it started off the whole joke about loading times, that Mass yeah. Effect. So what happens now? Is it still a loading time there in the, in the elevator or is it just you go? St- you still in, you still go in lifts and elevators and I think, Actually, it being on a modern console, it shows just how so some of the layouts of the, the buildings and that, in a way, these, these faster loading times. And um, it, it shows how badly these buildings are designed because you sort of need to go into one elevator to get to a small platform. Mm. But then you need to go off to another room, but that's further down in a different elevator. So they've, they've masked all these loading screens behind these elevators. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're just going to loads of elevators really quickly now. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make much sense, does doesn't the the layout? And I'd, if I were these people, I'd be having words with the architects. Yeah, for the design. But yeah, you can. The loading times have obviously been improved, I think, but the the elevators are still there, so you still need to go in them. Right. Um, but uh, on when you're on the Citadel, which is like the main hub hub world. Uh, you can get um, news bulletins, which will lead into side quests or um, some back and forth between your other companions that you've taken with you. So you don't necessarily mind being in these elevators because there's something going on at the same time. Mm. Oh, exciting. So are you um, you're enjoying it then? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, very, very much familiar, familiarity, but also... Um, you can see instantly where the improvements are. Right. Well, I'm tempted to go back, you know, to give it another go now. But I've done it all before. James, what about you? Are you tempted to give it a go for the first time? Um, probably not. <laughs> I mean, I've got plenty of other games to play. Yeah. Before that. Yeah, that's right. Skyrim. Oh, problem. Skyrim. Probably. Yeah, right, I remember that. Oblivion. Oblivion. Yes. That's about. Korean League playoffs soon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what games have you been playing, James? I don't play games anymore. Mm. But for the purpose of this segment, yeah. I'll mix them up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I reviewed the Wardrobe Even Better Edition. Um, I don't know why it's the Even Better Edition. They've never told me. But We'll call it the wardrobe. Okay. It's a point and click adventure. Um, and the main character is called Skinny. You die within the opening sequence. So that's different. Mm-hmm. Um, you get poisoned by a plum uh, during a picnic <laughs> with their best friend Ronald. Huh. Um, it's very serious. Someone died. Um, and the rest of the game is you playing as skinny who lives inside his best friend's wardrobe and um, and you've got to help his best friend get over the fact that he basically killed him with a plum um, but but after the first five minutes you don't really talk about any of that until right at the end so it's, it's a it's a main plot that you don't really Continue, if you know what I mean. It's just part. It's part of the story, but you don't really learn anything more. You don't talk to Ronald, um, who's his friend. It's more about little side stories mm. on the way to that. Um, and as it is a point and click, you got loads of confusing adventure puzzles to solve. Obscure ones, yeah, really obscure. Re- yeah, they really make no sense sometimes. Yeah. And that's probably the most uh, frustrating part. I mean, there's one part where you've got to mix sewage water with tablets and then give it to a pile of dust to evolve it into a strong pile of dust. Um, 
so yeah, it's it's um, it. You need a guide, I think, to play. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the the main reason I'd recommend it is that there's a load of pop culture references that are woven into the dialogue uh, and incorporated into the that uh, level designs. It is sort of quite nostalgic about spotting little nods to Mario and Harry Potter and The Matrix and things while you're playing it. Like, ah, oh, yeah, I recognise that. Mm. Um, like, you've got the Witch Doctor mask from Crash Bandicoot. Right. Um, um, and there's even... Have you seen Hellraiser? I have, yeah. Pinhead. Ah. Pinhead makes an appearance, which is completely random and pointless, but it's still fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the game I've played this week. How much is it? And how much? How many stars did you give it? Stars. <laughs> it, was cool it, it is. Yeah. Sixteen pounds seventy-four. That's a lot of money. Mm, yeah. That's a lot. Of money. You, you get about six hours of gameplay, I'd say. Right. Six to eight. Um, I give it a three and a half. Oh. But it all depends if you're into the whole nostalgia bit. If you're not on it. If you know from the Star Wars, it's going to annoy you. See, I, re- really annoy you. I reviewed a lot of point and clickers recently for us. Um, and it's yeah. by that, what's that publishing company that produces games all the time for four quid? Rata, Rata <laughs> 2. Like yeah, and they've done a lot of point and clickers recently. And they're about four quid. In that same retro kind of obscure clues kind of way. Yeah. So it's, it's, it seems to be a lot of them coming out at the moment. Yeah, Sixteen quid's quite high, yeah. yeah. It is if you're going to get annoyed by it. Yeah. Um, I'd say I quite enjoyed the finding things in the environments and going, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that. That's cool. Yeah. Good. All right. Huh? Um, I've been playing uh, Assassin's Creed DLC, the first sort of expansion story pack, which is called Wrath of the Druids. And uh, it's about 10 to 15 hours if you look through it. And I think it might cost you twenty four ninety nine. I think I've got the season pass, so it's it's there. And it takes um, the Viking guy that I've forgotten the name of, or the woman, um, off to Ireland, a part sort of like a part of Ireland where you can go and you go into a um, a kind of political um, drama involving the kings of Ireland, kings of Dublin, and um, the intrigue and this idea of these a cult. Like um, like the Templars and the main drone thing of Druids who are there to take over the world, and you it's it's the same kind of mechanics. I think it's really that different from the Assassin Creed. You you're going in your boats, you're doing raids, you're um, killing lots of people, <laughs> and you're uh, climbing lots of beautiful. And it looks stunning. The island, the bits of island they've got is just really great. It just looks really good. It's very rainy this time around. Um, and it's enjoyable, but it doesn't. It's great. I finished it, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, some of the DLC from the Assassin's Creed because it's taking you something completely different, or it's put you into some weird other reality or something. This one, just like doing a few more missions in the kind of world, even though Island's really nice to explore, it doesn't. It's a nice little bit of story. It didn't blow me away. It didn't go. Oh, that's great. And. The main problem I had, by the time I finished Assassin's Creed, and I put in about 85 hours into the last one, um, I was level 300 and something, 40 or something. And I think the recommendation level for this is about 250. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> if I just breathed on someone, they died. And I've got this <laughs> massive, shiny, kind of like ancient weapon. That I'm just like, and then you fight someone, you go, there you go. It's literally touching people and they're collapsing. And so when it came to the sort of boss battles, I'm just like, it's two minutes done. So I did have that. I was kind of, I did feel very, very overpowered, and um, and so it, it didn't have that tension it might normally done. But you know, it's Assassin's Creed. People love it. Will just love going around exploring it. And I said it took me about ten to maybe fifteen, maybe twelve hours to do the main story. But there's loads more to find in there. There's ancient weapons and extra 
secrets and levels and things to do. So um, yeah, if you if you like the Valhalla world, get back in. That's my advice. Get back in. Waste all the hours. Oh God, I've done so many hours. Um, Richard, what's your next game? This this was um, it's been on my backlog for a while. This one, and I thought with me going on the podcast, I didn't just want to spend all my time talking about Mass Effect, so I, I gave this one to try finally. But um, this is on PS4 and Nintendo Switch. I've been playing it on the PS4, but it's a game called Disaster Report Four, which is a Japanese game uh, where you play as a, a young person, man or a woman. I think you can create a character, and uh, you're on the bus. And a big earthquake hits, and uh, you then obviously get off the bus, and you sort of in this this city uh, after the earthquake, helping people out. Oh. Um, but it's it's a very weird game because you get a, there's a thing called uh, moral points. So rather than have like a morality system that sort of changes the world around you uh, people that you help out you you respond to their their help um so for example early on in the game there's a school teacher who's lost three of her pupils so you can either sort of offer to help her find these pupils which will get you moral points or you can try and char up which will get you <laughs> immoral points in the middle after an earthquake disaster yeah, like t- pick your timer. Oh, oh, and play. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, then, then there was a guy that um, was chasing after someone, and you sort of see him run off in the background, and he asks you which way he's going. So you can either tell him the truth or tell him a lie and get a moral or immoral points from that. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just it's strange. Um, it's obviously a, a terrible thing that's happened to this city, but you can, you can then almost take advantage of the situ- situation and just walk around being a total jerk. It sounds good. It, it, there's a game called, um, I know this might have been on the PS2, or maybe 360, called I Am Alive. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. A, and that yeah. had us, you were in, weren't you in an earthquake? And I remember you were sort of just climbing around in, through sort of buildings that were collapsing and trying to survive there. Rings a bell. Rings a bell. That and that was a Japanese game, I think. Sounded quite, yeah. So you enjoying it, Richard? It's unusual. Yeah. Okay. Um, it looks. I mean, I'm not put that that much time into it. I think I've only played an hour or so so far. But it looks quite basic in terms of of what else there is to do. Right. But okay. I'll I'll keep I'll keep going. I might start being a dick a bit more. I've been nice so far. I can, I can never be a dick. I always have to be nice in games. Right? <laughs> James, what about you? I'm the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Uh, it, yeah, you've got to do something you're not used to. Yeah, that's true. You know, so I just try and be a dick. Any yeah. chance you get, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, James, what else have you been playing? Um, we're pleased to know that have you heard of games like Bunny Parking, God. Soccer Bunny, yeah. and Kick It Bunny? There's another rabbit based puzzler coming to the Xbox in the first week of June. And I, you know, to play it ahead of time. Ah. Um, it's called Bunny Factory. Um, any questions? It's not, got, it's not got an embargo on it, this uh, game, is it? At this point. <laughs> I don't know. No, I can't. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, good. Just so we know. Uh, it, no, it, it's definitely okay. Right, so good. Far. Good. I knew it's not. Sorry, Neil. Um, it's. I, I, I didn't really get on with the other games in the Brin series. Uh, they're all quite poorly made, hmm. um, irritating, and um, just. I just didn't like them. But this one, it's quite an improvement. I'm impressed. Um, you take control of a, a bunny, or a rabbit, whatever you want to call it. It's 
inside a a mech suit. And you go around carrying boxes um, in a factory. And you put them on a grid that changes shape for each puzzle. Um, and the idea is that these boxes, this is very difficult to explain, uh, they emit lines of electrical currents in up to four different directions. So it could light up north, east, south or west on the grid. And you've got to cover the whole grid with these lines of currents. Did you have a jigsaw? Yeah. Um, and it, it's actually really clever because you start with one coloured boxes to the red first and then they add the yellow boxes you've got more to contend with and then later on you've got boxes with no colour and you have to decide which ones to use uh, and in which colour I love how you're trying to make this exciting I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it took it took me an hour to write the notes to make sense, and even now I don't understand it myself. But when you play it, it's it, it's fun. It makes complete sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, will it win any awards? Probably not. But right. it's a decent and quite logical game with these guys. I like the way you said the, it's the best of the Bunny series. Like we all know, it's like Mass Effect. The best of the Mass <laughs> Effect games. <laughs> I mean, it's cheaper than Mass Effect. It's under a tenner. Yeah, so it's there worth you go. Long. That's worth a lot. Good. Okay, um, good. If you buy it before launch, I think there's two quid off it. So you risk getting early. <laughs> if you want it, get in there now. Get in there. <laughs> get in there. <laughs> Good. If you miss it, you miss out. Yeah. Exactly, Richard. Yes. Exactly. Good. Um, the last game we're going to talk about, I'd really briefly, because I haven't played much of it, it's called The Wild at Heart, which um, is on Xbox Game Pass that came out this week. I had a, I've had about 45 minutes on it. It's a, it's a really nice little top-down sort of RM, R, maybe like an RPG crafter. You were kind of boy who's in his bedroom and then you just run away from home and then you go into this kind of adventure and in the sort of like from the back garden to the woods um and yeah it's an it's a i don't know much about it so my like 45 minutes but it's it's the artwork is beautiful it's really kind of like that cartoon kind of hand-drawn style um kind of wacky characters and a strange kind of like children's adventure it's really nice i'm really enjoying it so far um have a go at that and that leads us on to the game pass what's coming out to the end of may we kind of know don't we that's come out the wild at heart yeah no no kind of city that came out yesterday that's getting some good reviews yeah i'm surprised yeah um, it's like dodgeball isn't it dodgeball mixed with what do you say overwatch yeah I i'm gonna have to give that a go um, i think should we all give that a go yeah I think because it's on Game Pass as well. I think it's worth a look. Yeah, I'll get a party together. Yeah, because it is getting yeah. some nice sort of... Um, it's, EA released that other sort of arena game, Rocket Arena, last year. Didn't it? Rocket Arena? Yeah. Um, which was, But that was only good for half an hour or something, and then you've forgotten about it. But this looks like you might have a bit of legs to it. Yeah. Um, Man yeah. Eater's coming out. I'm interested in that. I was going to buy it, and I thought... You know what, I'll wait. I'm glad I did now. Because uh, I always fancied being a shark, killing people. Mm. It's a lifelong dream. Good. I, can, uh, prefer. Um, I think I've played it on PS5, and it's, it's yeah, it's not for me. I, do, I think we gave it a 5 out of 5, you know. Did we? <laughs> I think so. well, did, did Paul, review, Paul reviewed it? <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 Wow. Because <laughs> it was a, a fish-based game. <laughs> yeah, he loves a fish based. There is another fish game coming out on the... Um, the Catch. The Catch. I've, one day I, I will play. get a five as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, SnowRunner, have you played any of those games? That's coming out. No. No, but someone, I saw someone describe it as uh, Death Stranding meets Forza Horizon. 
And I was like, oh, I'm going to give this a go now then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's no Richard. Yeah, it's kind of bold crime, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, guess, I, I think it is all about just trying to balance, isn't it? Balance your weight loads and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, you need to. It's, it's much more of a tactical drive than just bombing it up a hill. Yeah. And then there's Conan, Conan Exiles. I think I might have reviewed at one point. I remember playing that, which is like a survival yeah. RPG. It was good. You like all that stuff? Very good. Um, now, it's not... And, and sorry. It get Net Warrior 5. I did forget it for a reason. What is that? I, I have no idea. <laughs> right. But I think it's like fighting in mechs. God. It's like 2002 all over again. It's actually 2015. <laughs> Really <laughs> yeah. um, the now there isn't it is a, a madly impressive mo- oh, we did have what do we have at the start of May but I think June might be there might be some prizes for June might there, with the E3 I think we're going to get a few prizes yeah s- surprises we might get a few oh. um, okay, it's, out then. it's out tomorrow <laughs> announcements won't we yeah. yeah definitely yeah on Game Pass um other news this week, um, some people might get very excited about this, some people might not care, is Time Splitters, which was on the old PS2, wasn't it? Last time I remember that happening. Yeah. That's, that's com- it's coming back, isn't it? Tell us about it. Who's excited about Time Splitters? Not me. <laughs> Richard, tell us about it. What is Time Splitters, first of all? Time Splitters is a first person shooter. Um, they released three of them on the PS2, and it, the company that did it was known as Free Radical, which originally started um, as sort of like a breakout from Rare, I believe. Um, but basically, the T- THQ Nordic they they own the IP. They bought it back a while ago. Uh, not them, sorry. Uh, Deep Silver have it. Okay. Um, but they're basically recreating Free Radical Design as a studio again to to handle this IP. Um, and they've got uh, Steve Ellis and David Doak who worked on the original titles back in to, to sort of spearhead this new studio. And it is it's quite exciting for, for Time Splitters fans, even though they've they've sort of said um development development on a new game has not started, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and sort of say, Well, they're not doing Time Splitters for but working on perhaps the existing games and bringing them back out. Oh, okay. Like a little trilogy of them. Yeah. It- is it right to say, because I kind of vaguely remember, I wasn't a big fan, because it wasn't online, was it? It was it was a local, or even local, was it uh, even local? Could you play against each other? Yeah, yeah, definitely play local, because right. that was me and, me and my friends when we should have been revising for GCSEs. Uh, but I think the third one, Future Perfect, had online capabilities if you had the big... Um, uh, add-on for the PS2, which ah. if I recall, not many people did anyway. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they are doing anything with the original trilogy because I know that there's a lot of love out there for Time Splitters 2. Uh, myself included. James? I've actually played Time Splitters 2. I think it was one of the first games I've got with the Xbox, um, I never, I never really remembered it. So it can't have been that good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so no, I don't, I don't want a remastered or a reboot or anything. Thanks. Can you do something else that'd be great? I heard that they worked on Rise at um, one point. The team. Right. Did they? Um, yeah. Did they go into Crytek? Yeah. So I'd rather just go back there and do Rise 2. If we can make that happen. Okay. Um, right, the next bit we're going to talk about, I think it's interesting because I think it's, it's I don't know, 
in in the world where we've got you've got Overwatch and you've got those kind of games now, it's it's such a long time, isn't it? Two thousand two was it last time it was out? Three maybe? Eighteen years since it was really. Yeah, it was one of those times. I think it's around that time. It's just whether it will hold up and have that appeal. I mean, it's like a whole generation yeah. won't know what it is. Yeah. I've yeah, recently ever watched it on computer. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm just talking about time splits again, thinking about how. But Richard's excited, so I should be excited. I'll be excited. Yeah, it's for a long enough time. It's a long enough time for a new generation to enjoy it, mm. as well as everyone being it's sort of, I think the problem is, though, that. It came out. It was an FPS that came out before Call of Duty really hit its stride, mm-hmm. and everything, every basically every FPS then since then sort of tried to emulate that in some way. But Time Split has had its own unique charm. That it, whilst it might not have been the most the best FPS in terms of mechanics and stuff like that, it just had had something different about it. Yeah, that might get a bit lost nowadays. Which is my worry. Yeah. Good. Well, we'll see. We'll see in 2025. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, going on briefly is um, it's another interesting one. Overwatch 2. Um, Blizzard, who are having loads of issues this week with people leaving and reports of the company. People, all, all the staff going off into indie studios. Um, but they showed a stream of Overwatch 2. And the interesting thing about this, they've got this, um, which I quite liked, find it kind of interesting and fascinating, is they've made it six versus six per, um, PvP. They've gone down to five, and they've got it so you can only have one tank character instead of two. Mm-hmm. And what I found interesting, I mean, for us, it's like because we're not huge Overwatch players, are we? I really enjoyed it, but it's not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't realise how big the thing is because it's like pro teams and people make money from it. All these people who have played tank characters have been saying, you know, who's worried about their job? And it's, of course it's a job for people, isn't it? Playing in these pro leagues. And they can yeah, only do one tank. Is that right? Yeah, and the fact they've cut it down from six to five. Mm. So someone's sitting on the bench Yeah. in the next season. Um, we've played for it a it would be quite disheartening that they spent all this time on, say, a tank character, and now they're going to have to either learn a different one to get into the team, or even just not not get in at all Yeah. in the next game. Um, but then I think from an outsider's point of view, I think, well, it's a new game. <laughs> I thought it was two. You've got to expect to start again. Mm. Um, and you should be so self entitled. Just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something interesting, isn't it, in the, in the whole thing of just going, when, like you said, yeah, it's a new game. But that that sort of held true maybe 10 years ago when you would sort of like go, okay, we're going to do a new um, I don't know, Call of Duty and it's here, we've got rid of that gun. And people would go mad about it. But now it's. This is interesting because it's people's careers now. They've built a career off a game, haven't they? They're pro. Pro watch, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's like it's something like going into a a firm, maybe who do I don't know, sell paper, and then going, we're getting rid of the um, that department. <laughs> that department's gone, and people are, isn't it? Yeah. It has a similar feel to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Am I am I over dramatizing it here? But I was quite interested. <laughs> right, I mean, yeah, it's people job. People getting very worried and very heads up by it. I was always of the impression that with playing Overwatch, you tended to have three or four characters that you knew inside out anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so you would always have a backup in case. Because if if so, for example, if we were to go on and play Overwatch, um, and a character that we that we knew well was already chosen we'd have to pick a different one yes so but i guess um, these people have been just that's their they're brilliant at being that tank aren't they i mean you're right they have to retrain but that's what they do they're professionals right i mean yeah but at the same time redundancies happen yeah in businesses yeah. all the time yeah and at the same time you're getting paid to play a game you should be lucky they've had a, a decent career in one game if it's the end of it, it's the end of it. 
you know, do you have to either work hard with a new game or just make peace with the fact that they got to go. No, oh, James, I lost you there in the last bit. Cut out. It was really good no. advice. I just have to go out with people. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get hold of James, who's head of HR. Yeah, <laughs> What's your advice for your next career move? I'm here. Um, I'll talk you through it. I'm a, quite, a, quite a fledgling hard. football league in the Korean. Yeah. In the Koreas <laughs> that needs some help. Um, gentlemen, should we do a quiz? Oh, it's, um, let's just quickly look at this. It's Experts Celebrates Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Um, when's that, James? Uh, it was the 20th. No. Um, May. <laughs> we missed it. Um, and they just they announced a few things that they're bringing in. One of the interesting thing was um, for party chat, they were, they were enabling people to speak in party chat, and it will come up in text oh. for people that are hard of hearing. That's good. And vice versa. Oh. Sorry. Um, Sorry, no, James. Come. On. No, sorry, Jim. <laughs> one of you, one of you, Richard. Tell me what we're going to say. I was just going to say, uh, having used text to speech in Microsoft Teams, though it's it's not very good. Yeah, I was going to say they are doing text to speech the other way around as well, where people that can't speak can write in text and it will read it out in um, a robot voice, technically. Um, so they're integrating that into the party chat very soon. Oh, okay. I mean, it's good to have it. Yeah. You can't... It's good to see that they're trying to... Yeah. ...had more options to the... Uh, yeah, absolutely. The yeah. Good. Yeah. Right, you lot, we're going to do a quiz. Because there isn't much else. So there's an next... Yeah, we're going to have to, yeah. Um, Xbox and Bethesda have confirmed the joint E3 conference, but we've not a lot to say about that, apart from... <laughs> They're doing it. We don't know what they're going to say. But we'll have some more E3 stuff in the next couple of weeks. Um, let's do a quiz. Now, James is a reigning champion at the moment. Winning, he's just beating everyone. Poor Paul got devastated last time in this quiz. What have I called this quiz? It's the same one I do every time. I'll quickly explain the rules. I've got a game. Um, you've got to guess what the game is. There's five clues. And I've taken the clues from the user reviews from Metacritic. And... And the user reviews are from the general public, the people whose voices really count, who or who are drunk. And they talk about their game. And the first clue is hard, and the last one is um, easier. So whoever gets it, you get a point. Five points if you get it straight away. One point for um, guessing it, the fifth clue. And, of course, there's a bonus point for getting the user review score. All clear? Are we yes. ready? Good. Yes. James, you ready? Yeah. Good, he's, he's going to do it. First game, first clue. Who's going first? Uh, Richard. There are literally no words in the world to s- describe how amazing this game is. You have one guess each. Death Stranding. Oh, no. James. There are literally no words in the world to describe how amazing this game is. Is it Destiny 2? <laughs> no. <laughs> you say that quite a lot. <laughs> um, question 2. Going to. Um, 30 frames per second, bad frame pacing, no 60 frames per second in 4K. It's a delusional remake, technically badly executed. You can't seriously give it a high score for lazy programming. Oh, James. It's like a remake. I don't know. Resident Evil 3. No. Good guess, though. Mm. Um, Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy. No. Good guess as well. Third clue. First thing first, the fact you have to download two of the three games is annoying. I had to wait an hour to get the game running because of the downloads. I had no internet this morning, so I had to wait a long time before getting to play. 
just someone being annoyed. Like uh, Richard. Um. Spyro. Correct. Well done, Richard. Three points. Well done, Richard. Really good. And the other two clues were the game is almost a perfect remaster of the original trilogy. Um, last one was Crash Bandicoot again, a remake. It's inevitable that Spyro would too. And wow, do I love it. Okay, good. Um, James, you can guess the score. Um, 8.4. 0.4. Richard, what are you going to do? 7.9. Good. I've lost the document. Just talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your one, James? 8. Uh, what was the right answer? 8.4. What was yours, Richard? 7.9. Oh, Richard's got it. It's 8.1. So Richard was closer by point. Well done, Richard. Damn. It's Richard's day. Come on, James. What are you doing? Put yourself together. You're the champion. Some respect. I'm going to have to be hung over more often if it goes yeah, like yeah. this. I think, I think the fact you're getting a pep talk from you, Gareth, <laughs> is even more depressing. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, James is first. Next game. A masterpiece. Yep. The godfather of video games. I promise you, this game you could just throw out all the other ones. You never want to okay then again. That's the how it's literally how they've written. You never want to okay then again. Whatever the hell that means. Um. Mm. I'm gonna have to rush you two. Is it your keys are like a dragon? No, no. Oh. Richard. The Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> no. Good. Next clue. Don't understand me wrong. Actually, the game <laughs> makes fun, especially when you play local <laughs> multiplayer. <laughs> Don't understand me wrong. Uh, um, Richard. What game is local multiplayer now? Um, Halo Master Chief Collection. No. Halo 5. No. Good. Next clue. Not worth it since this game has lower qualities than its predecessors and, is, and it's available on consoles that aren't Nintendo. Oh. Um, I can't think. <laughs> Go on, James. Do a quick, do a guess. A random guess. Just go with the witch history. I don't know. No. Okay. Good. Richard. No. Mario Kart. No. Good. For two points. More modes would have been nice because after a while, doing the same thing does not make the game does make the game become a little repetitive. <laughs> Richard mm. Not a clue um... Not a clue uh... Oh god <laughs> <laughs> Rocket right. League No Go with the No For one point Um there are a decent variety of songs to dance to, and I can't see me or my children getting bored of the game anytime soon because of this. Just dance. Yes. Well done. The <laughs> point. James. <laughs> I know you're so disappointed to get it right. Just dance. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I liked it. Someone saying it was the godfather of video games. I know. That's amazing. <laughs> um, good. Um, Richard, you get to go for the score this time. 7.2. What are you going for, James? Uh, 7.1. James has got it. It's 5.8. Mm, that's harsh. Oh. Like dancing games. No. I was, I, was, I was hoping that Godfather comment would skew it to a higher score. Yeah. yeah. That's just that one person's view. That was it. No, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Game three. 
Verse yeah. two. Very high quality action game. Unique story and excellent game mechanics. Uh, is it Richard first? I think it might be. No. Uh, we've got a Death Strand in again. Nope. Mad Max. Ooh, no. <laughs> Clue two. Big performance issues, terrible graphics for a console game, and worst issue of all, the cinematics crash and have poor animations. James. Uh, Metal Gear 5? That's a good guess, but no. That was my guess as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Halo 5. No. Good guess as well. Clue 3. Even if you don't pay attention to its ominous, weird story and characters, you'll still get the most of its gameplay and presentation. And my God, the art direction here is jaw-dropping in capitals. Richard. Borderlands 3? Uh, no. Borderlands 2? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, clue, t- clue 4. A co-worker suggested this game to me, and I'm very glad they did. I couldn't put it down. Jesse, the main character, is well written, and I love the voice actress's work. James. Jesse. I thought it was Jesse. Um, no, I can't think. I know it's wrong, but control. Two points, well done, James. To control, <laughs> very good, yeah. I really thought, good. I think it Jesse. Yeah. I couldn't think. Very good. Oh. And the last clue was Remedy have done it again. Think. What a game, definitely 2019 game of the year. Um, who's guessing the score? Is it... James, 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 yeah. What are you going for, James? Mm, 8.3. 8.3. Richard? 8.2. It's 7.3. Richard's got it. Oh, it's close, this. It's, uh, so Richard's on five. James is on four. Wow. Game four. I was, I was actually really surprised with this one. It's pretty rare to see a shooter rely on story to keep the player going instead of the mindless action we see in the Call of Duty series. And that's um, James. Is it Battlefield? No. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to have to rush you two now. Crisis. No, good guess though. Clue two. Feels like a really bad version of Bioshock. Stuck on rails, a la the COD games, and none of the fun or polish that either of these titles provide. Given it's an FPS, it fails on the most basic premise. The shooting is broken. It's Richard, mm. I think. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't think. Can't think now. <laughs> I'm going to have to rush you. <laughs> uh, Borderlands 3 again. No. I can't think of anything. James. Probably wrong. Do you sound good, Oh, good guess, but no. no. Hmm. Clue 3. Why am I telling to, you to buy the book and then play the game? Because the story might be difficult to follow. Because it barely tells the story of the book. I think that's James. I can't make up the quote. Get the book before the game. Because the book tells me. Gears of War? Ooh, no. Richard. Is it Metro Exodus? No. Good, next clue. In the first few levels, visiting the small station towns was a real treat. The atmosphere is breathtaking. There are so many details that one can absorb. And that is that is that you, Richard? Yeah. Yeah. Metro twenty thirty three. Yeah. 
Good. <laughs> Sorry, Richard. That was so cruel. That first one. No, I knew. I knew. When you said the book, I knew what it was going to be. But then when you said the station towns, I'd got the wrong one. And the last clue was: you're not finding this desolate. You will not find the desolate satirical waste of fallout in this game. Most of the game takes place in the metro tunnels of Moscow. Um, right. Whose go is it? I guess in the. This, in Me. The yeah. What are you going to go for? Uh, seven point seven. Um, James, what are you going to go? Uh, 7.8. It's 7.7. 7. Richard, oh, <laughs> you're on the nose. <laughs> right, James, you've got to pull out a, a worldie here in the first two to get right. it. Is it. Before we start, is it Halo 5? <laughs> <laughs> no. Is it Destiny 2? Richard's first, though, to guess. So here's oh, the first no. one. The, gra- I- the graphics are very atmospheric, as is the audio. The game seems to be fairly linear, but with some open world design. Gears 5? No, James, this is it. No pressure. Mm-hmm. Um... I'm going to have to rush you. All right, calm down. Um... <laughs> I'm going to go out. <laughs> Limbo. Limbo, no. Could guess so. Oh, oh, oh this is you've got to do it on this one. Prepare for a lot of walking, running, and voices. Game could have been much better, but too much focus is on just telling the story rather than the mechanics. Hellblade. You're absolutely right. It's Hellblade. Yes, yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> So, it's eight all. I'm just going to go through the other ones. Nice graphics, but Scandinavian theme, big fail. Um, D, take a look, Morty, Naughty Dog, beautiful story game with a strong female protagonist. And last one was Ninja Theory, really did something else with this game. Um, it's eight all, and it all goes down to guessing the score, who gets closer. So, Hellblade. Um, <laughs> it's a terrible way to win all those. It's amazing. Uh, who's... Who's guessing the score first? I think I can't remember. James. James, go for it, James. Uh, my word. Um, eight. An eight. Um, Richard, what are you going to go for? That's a, a good marker. Uh, I'm going to have to go a seven point nine. So for the for the game. Um. Richard's dead on. It's 7.9. Oh. <laughs> He's done it. <laughs> He's done it. <laughs> wow. That was... How are you, how are you well feeling, done, James? James? you okay? I'm feeling like, you know, I had a good run. <laughs> good. It's in a horrible way to lose. Good. Right, a horrible way to lose. But what a game. What a game. Um, this what, is the content people want. This is it, isn't it? What are we looking forward to next week? We've got to go. Um, Richard, what are you looking forward to? Uh, th- well, this evening is uh, Eurovision. Yeah. I'm a massive Eurovision fan, so we're having uh, a bit of a garden party for it this evening. Oh, nice. I need to go go after this and put a gazebo up Good. in the rain. Nice. <laughs> are you picking for the winner? Are you going for I'm going to go for San Marino. Oh. Because they've got a floor a rider. Oh, I might watch it tonight. I haven't watched it for years. Um, James, what are you doing? Uh, this week is the Europa League final uh, for Man United. So I'm watching that. Um, yeah. It won't be fun. It's something to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's all I've got as well. There's no games I'm coming out. And I'm, so I'm working, finishing work. I finish for it next Friday. So I'm going to look forward to that. Um, but gentlemen, thank you so much for a thrilling quiz. Um, competition all the way uh, <laughs> where can we find you James if we need to talk to you we can miserate you um, I'll be crying in the corner otherwise I'll be on Twitter at OKGKL and Instagram okay. Richard we can find you on Twitter at Dobbo1912 and you can find me at TV Bradley on Twitter and Twitch but for now gentlemen I'll see you next time bye 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 right. 
You've been listening to the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook. <laughs>